So for us, kick off their World Cup campaign up against the Socceroos. Will they go off to a flyer? Will they go off to a sticker? We'll talk all about it next. <laughs> That's right, folks. Bounce game with the World Cup rivals with you today. We're talking about this. That's right. Is the World Cup trophy and France, of course, hoping to get their hands right back on it uh, as, of course, they kick off the campaign up against Australia. We'll talk about that and more in a second. If you know where you've been, smash your subscribe button back to all things Rovers related. Talking French football related, World Cup itself related. We got it all here, boys. Under one roof. Of course, can France go the distance again? And we're back to back World Cup titles. Something that's never been done in World Cup history. Well, of course, we're going to take a look in a second. Of course. Shout out to my VIPs. They are the patrons, of course. You know who you are. But anyway, let's get cracking. Of course, Jeremy is with here, with me here, of course, talking about all things France football. Tell him your name. Of course, we already told you it's Jeremy. But of course, where you are, what brought you to Australia, and something cool uh, about France. The name is Jeremy. Uh, I'm in Australia because I've been traveling for a while. I've lived in the US for a bit. Uh, and then I went to Australia. And of all the countries, it's probably the uh, the best to, to be in. And since I'm here, I've been doing my side work but also football commentating and and writing etc so try to get in touch with with all this i have a french football podcast that i that i enjoy doing uh and yeah some something to know about france i don't know maybe maybe france is one of those countries where everybody loves their club maybe more than they love their nation and and you'd see a, a player like uh, hugo loris getting booed at the stade velodrome one week and the week after everybody cheers for him so Maybe we are very much about our, our city more than our nation. Yes, and uh, of course, uh, uh, the World Cup holders, France, uh, hoping to avoid any jinx this coming tournament uh, with a with a whole superstar standout team, which, of course, has got everybody predicting that could be one of the, uh, maybe the only team that won back-to-back -back World Cups. So it could be a bit of pressure put on the, the French heading into this. But as a Frenchman in Australia, uh, what are your hopes and dreams for the tournament? But mainly, what are your hopes and dreams for this first game against your, your currently home? nation i know i know right it's a it's a debate at home uh, but it's look for the for the competition i, I think we'll go as far as we can of course and we have hopes to, to win another one as far as the third game goes it it's a bit of it's a bit of mixed feelings if we win it and if we win it too comfortably we might get into comfortable when we have to play against Denmark and Tunisia after and if we stop the wrong way then it might be a good kick in the ass of a team who maybe thinks that they're too good for who they are if anything, all those injuries that we've had, Pogba, Kante and, and Benzema, Varane may, maybe not starting, is probably good because the players that are going to play are keen to prove they're not the world champions. They're the players that want to become the next world champions. So, so it could help. Australia don't have the talent that France has. They still have a, a strong core to play together, but France should, should beat them if, if logic is respected. Football is football, of course. Indeed, yes, football is football. We, you just don't know. But I think if, if, if realistically, a, a, a football, for an unbiased po point of view here, if this game was played 100 times, France would probably win like at least 80, 85, maybe even, you know, I don't know, a, lot, a whole high, a lot more than Australia would. But there is always that one chance. Uh, and you did touch on it there briefly, but uh, as a Frenchman, of course... Um, you know, I think it's ambitious that you could go all the way. But what would be the worst case scenario for France in maybe the last 16 or the quarterfinals? Who would you not want to play on your journey to maybe a second final and maybe a second title? I think you want to avoid Argentina. They are the ogre of the competition. They're in Group C, we're in Group D. So if we don't finish first and they don't finish first, then there's a chance that we meet each other. It's Messi's last World Cup. So it's the one that you want to avoid or or keep for as long as possible. Mind you, we have good memories of playing Argentina. That 4-3 win in 2018 is what kind of made the French squad what it was and brought them to the final and brought them to the, to the title eventually. So you want to delay playing them, but it may also be the, the team that kind of create the group. But yeah, if we can avoid Argentina... We want okay, to. Okay, yeah. That, again, but again, for, uh, for our point of view, the unbiased, that will be a tasty game whenever it comes along uh, down the road, whether it is last 16 or quarterfinals or, or what have you. Uh, now, speaking of uh, your opposition for your first game, the, the Socceroos, the Australians, again, you, you do have a close... You, you can have a little sneaky eye on them because you're right there. But uh, if we're, with your hat on here, what, who's the player that worries you the most from Australia? There's a kid called Garen Quall, and, and now people in the UK might have heard of him because he signed for Newcastle uh, in, in the summer, and he's just making wave, and he plays like he's got nothing to lose. He plays like he's got nothing to prove. He just 
enjoys the game, not calculating it. And in A-League, he's starting to make waves, starting to score goals every time he comes in as a sub, and he's been called in. Uh, so he's the kind of player that if he comes in late in the game against a French team that maybe is asleep, he could create issues. B besides him, there's another kid called uh, Jackson Irvine that German uh, followers would know. He plays for St. Pauli. Uh, and he's a, uh, he's a deceivingly great player because he looks pretty chill with his long hair and, and as playing as a defensive mid, but he's got a lot of talent. So those two players, I think, as what well, we have to, uh, to be mindful of when you play Australia. Yeah, yeah, I know Jackson Irvine from his days at Hull. Of course, yes, and I, I kept an eye on him. He went to Hibs and then now over in Germany, uh, of course. Uh, but what about uh, for the, the the French team? And of course, all the spotlight usually, typically, is on Kylian Mbappe. But if we were to move him out, which pretend he doesn't exist, just for this just for this moment here, uh, who else for the French team are going to get off our seats for excitement? Who's the player? Who's got the wow factor for the France? I don't know if it's excitement, but the war factor, I think, comes from Aurelien Chouameni, the midfielder who just signed for Real Madrid in, in the summer. Whenever France won something, they had great midfielder. There was Deschamps, there was Vieira, there was Pogba, uh, Pogba and Kante, of course, in 2018. And now with them not being here, it's going to be a new pair. And Chouameni is the one that we know is going to be in that new pair. So whether it's with Fofana or Kamavinga or Rabiot, he's going to play that. If he has a great World Cup, France will have a great World Cup. And he's a player that I think his average is 93% pass accuracy with Real Madrid. So he's, he's got talent. He's good defensively. He's good offensively. I think he's going to explode on the world stage uh, in Qatar. Yeah, of course. Uh, it could be uh, following in great footsteps there. You mentioned some real uh, uh, quality French French folk, folk from the past. But, of course, let's now, again, do another create and another imaginary scenario. You are the coach for this opening game against Australia. I want to hear your 11 from the goalkeeper all the way through to the forward. I'm going to be the coach. I'm going to follow what Deschamps would do to, to try and be true to what might happen. Uh, Lloris is the goalkeeper, of course, and the captain. Uh, the left back is going to be Lucas Hernandez from Bayern Munich. The right back, Benjamin Pavard from Bayern Munich as well. The two central defenders, when Varane comes back, it's going to be in there and probably next to Upamecano to get three defenders from Bayern Munich. Deschamps loves to have that cohesion back in national team. Before Varane comes, Kunde will probably play. The midfield, three midfielders, Chouameni, Fofana and Adrian Rabio, And up front, Mbappé, Benzema and Griezmann. Benzema might not play the first game, so Giroud will be there. But that's what France is going to play. And they're going to play most likely a defensive brand of football with fast attacking counter-attacks and, 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 I guess, fast build-ups. Not a lot of patience in what we're going to play. We're going to use the pace of Mbappé. All right, yeah. Well, excited. Excited to, hear, to see them in action, to see if they can do, do the unthinkable and... and win a second successive uh, uh, World Cup. So there is another game going on in your group. Uh, Tunisia you're taking on Denmark. Again, with maybe you're just your planning, your scheming uh, for the next round. What do you want to hope? What do you want to see in that match? But also, what do you think will happen in that match? I think a draw would be ideal. We played Denmark in the second game. So the second game is going to be quite important because it could be very complicated for either or because on the other side, if Australia or Tunisia win, they have a chance at the upset on game three. So I think it's going to be a very interesting group uh, with the way the games are done. A draw between Denmark and Tunisia, if we beat Australia, would be, I think, ideal because then regardless of the score in the second game, we're not out of the, of the group or we can still finish first. So that's what we'll hope. I think Denmark had a great year last year. Hopefully it was their time to shine and now it's passed. I think Tunisia really want to get out of the group stage for the first time in their history. Uh, and they have all this narrative going behind them and players that are slowly getting better. Uh, so so I'm, I wouldn't... I wouldn't put Tunisia away, but yeah, if there can be a draw there and we beat Australia, it's the ideal start for us. Awesome. Okay, and then now here is all important money question. What's the final score going to be between Australia and France in their opening game? I'd say 2-1 and two goals from uh, Antoine Griezmann. 2-1 is the score that we beat Australia on in 2018 and Griezmann was involved in both games. I think it'll be a, a bit of a repeat of that, a bit of a heartbreaker for Australia. 89th minute goal or something like that to, uh, to really make them sad. But banging, banging. Appreciate that. And again, thanks again, uh, Jeremy. Of course, uh, Jeremy's got his own French football podcast out there, so make sure you check that out. There should be a link down in the old description. If not, slap my bald head uh, and remind me that I've missed it. Uh, but of course, uh, give it some love in. Uh, smash your thumbs up, smash your subscribe, hit the little bell. We'll go again. We'll keep up to date with Jeremy as, of course, France's uh, uh, progress in the World Cup will continue. Uh, and hopefully it'll be a long, 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 long World Cup for France and Jeremy as, he, of course, he gets uh, ready to, uh, to, to, to maybe take out his uh, soccer ruse, his home 
home nation right now. Anyway, appreciate that. Thanks again. Smash your subscribe, smash the little bell. We've got all non-stop content right here at Blood and Rose Seas.